Okay, we are literally on top of the mountain in this area. It's one of the highest spots you can find. As you can see behind you, the actual water tower is on this property. Uh, incredible view. This is everything I just personally love. You're looking west out here. On the other side over here, you're looking east. You can actually see uh, Lake Fort Smith's dam. If you go around in the winter, you can definitely see it. I'll probably try and clear some of these trees out. Uh, as you can see through there, it just needs a little bit of cleanup. We're not focusing on that right now because we are building over here. This is kind of the end result of the uh, excavator coming up here and clearing the land. It gets kind of ugly when you do that. The, uh, we probably took out more trees than I really wanted to. We had a problem with some beetles up here. Some of the trees were diseased and you're better off just going ahead and taking them out or they will spread throughout the forest. What you have down here is the actual foundation that we just put in and uh, we'll go down there and touch on it more in a minute. This spot up here, I can't decide what to do with it. We might put some cornhole up here, put a patio up here, uh, fire pit, you name it. We also own property back up here that's higher than this. What we did learn that was interesting is I thought, hell, the water tower is right there. We just tap in the water tower. We don't have to worry about, you know, all the plumbing and everything. There's a formula where the way these water tires are placed, obviously on high levels, as it goes down the hill, it gains more pressure. The closer you are to it, the less pressure you have. So we're going to have to buy what's called a pressure tank in this uh, property here. And if we come up here, it's just going to be a stronger pressure take. Just little things you learn as you go along. But the key up here, as I've mentioned, electric water, big thing, uh, perk. This property's already perked. You've got electric lines literally coming up here. They came up the road, and that's a pole right there. So I can pull from that pole right down to this property here. And with the water tower here, you've got the main line coming out of here that goes down the hill. So we've already tapped into it over there. We'll show you that. And uh, I believe that over here on this water side, it was $1,500 to, in essence, buy that tap and have them come out here and put it in, which is a relative bargain, believe it or not, because things have gone up so much. Um, it's just part of the it's nature of the beast so to say be careful when you drive in these areas uh, there is a culvert right there that I've actually had a little incident on already I'm gonna put a flower box in front of it but when you're on dirt roads depending on what you're doing with this land just be very aware of the roads where the cuts because there's a lot of really steep cut or excuse me tight cuts that you don't know what's around it. if someone's up here and hadn't been up here before you just want to make sure your guests and yourself are covered. Uh, and those are just some things to look out up here. We're going to go down and look at the foundation in a minute. Our fire is burning fine. We touched on that a minute ago. We still have a lot of cleanup up here. Again, right now, while I'm building, I try to lay down ground cover and think that through because you'll regret it if you don't. You'll just end up with briars and things like that coming right back at you. You can again see the flower box we have up here. I like to piss off the gentleman that does my groundwork and plant trees in the foundation before he even gets the concrete down. It gives him something to complain about and it keeps him, you know, going day to day. Okay, we're now we're down on the home site, which uh, as you can see, I, I, when I use the terminology foundation, I'm talking about basically the outer parts, not the concrete yet. Uh, Brent just took a uh, quick picture of the water tap, if you care. That is a water tap. It's already been put in as we discussed. We've already run the line. You can see the blue piping coming up over there. And uh, to give you a overview of what we're doing here, these rocks on the backside are actually retaining wall for the upper, what's gonna be another retaining wall. And there's gonna be a driveway that goes around there with steps coming down. This is obviously the main home or where the home is gonna be uh, with the retaining rocks there. It's going to be a modern home. I had a, We had a couple of choices on this. You either dig down because of the grade when you set up your pad and you've got to have drainage on it. And we would have used a bulldozer to do that and level it out. We chose to, I was talked into doing this, $5,000 later, it's now done, or actually probably $10,000 later, but to build this up with uh, shale, which I think gives it a really cool look. But these, I mean, what do you think about those rocks, Brent? I think it's pretty awesome. And it also saved you a bunch of money from bringing in, what, another 20, 20 truckloads of shale and other dirt, using it as a retaining wall. Well, and these rocks were all on 
on property. This property has a ton of rocks. That's about, I'm guessing, seven feet tall at the high point. And again, you've got a beautiful view going out over here. This, this land has been perked. You can see the white flags over there. Uh, the septic tank will be down down the hill a little bit. Septic, they always want to run downhill with the lateral lines, etc. You can actually see there where the clover is coming in up here, as I mentioned before. I try and do all of it once because if your cabin's built and you got all this junk sitting around, it's just not what you want and it just means more work for you. So if you have time, try and do it all at once. Uh, the gentleman that did this rock work is another great uh, person we use with excavator and skid steer. If I can ever put you in touch with them or if you ever need any help on that end, feel free to, to ask. But it's uh, this, this property, like I said, is one of those where you're hitting on all cylinders because you have the rock here, which is a pain in the butt, but you can see the neat things you can do with it. Um, and this whole area here is gonna be covered with the clover again. We're gonna come back in and put some more trees in. Again, I, hate, I you know I hated to lose the trees we did, but that's what makes this area so wonderful is to have the trees. So we're probably gonna plant some pines for long term. And then some other ornamental type of trees, etc. Uh, the roads, as I mentioned, these are difficult things when you're dealing with the mountains. We're gonna actually lay uh, gravel on this road going up here and this road going here when you come down. Might actually gravel most of this for parking, etc. We're still trying to figure out exactly what we wanna do with this property because it's so neat and there's so many uh, options. As I said in the first episode, anytime I touch something like this, I just, I want options. Uh, and I think that's the way you have to look at land, uh, unless you just say, I want 100 acres and I want to do, you know, just hunt on it. You're, you're, you're better off planning for uh, things that could change or that you may want to do in the future. So we're up here on the foundation. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's going to, you're going to have a really cool uh, modern cabin up here. Uh, it's what, like, 500 square feet on this one. 500 square feet. Uh, you can go a little bit bigger. Obviously, there's six acres. Um, but the what could somebody take six acres and build a cabin um, roughly on expenses? And then what is the return on that as far as like Airbnbs or just a personal cabin? What what are they going to end up with? Well, it's like anything. It's all over the board. It depends what you put into the cabin. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I like to go a little higher in, and, and the easiest thing you can do is, is plant pretty plants. But on this one in particular, this is going to be pretty high end. It's going to have um, car siding throughout it, which is shiplap siding, just different terminology. And it's going to have a massive patio on the front. What I'll correct Brent on, which I get it, it's kind of funny. You know, I I built I built several homes in McKinney, Texas, uh, in other places, and uh, when you see that foundation, no matter the size of the house, you think, man, that is a small house. It's very deceptive, but you can see these stakes here. In front of this, these stakes on this particular property, you're gonna have a 10 foot patio with a sloped roof going up over it, covering it. So you're gonna have this incredible view. We're probably gonna put a whirlpool on the front of it. All that being said, to lead, lead into the uh, this particular cabin, I'd like to get 200 to $250 a night which is on the higher end up here for a smaller cabin like that. But again, you've got a lot of intangibles up here that romantic getaway, etc. I think uh, will pay for itself. But until you do it, you, you just don't know. Uh, but I have a pretty good feel for it. The other thing I'll touch on when Brent was asking about land and everything, I've lived all over the country, Atlanta and Dallas, and what I've seen, for whatever reason, both of those cities grew straight north. Dallas, that's the joke, as I live in Oklahoma down there. Atlanta, the joke was I lived in Tennessee. Well, if you come up and you look at Benton, Bentonville and Fayetteville in that area, it's all grown north. It, it's only going to go south. This is just me saying this. Logically, this land down here has got a lot more upside than land up north. And again, this is the world according to Ken, which can be scary at times. And that's kind of how I ended up down here. And, you know, I'm already seeing the payoff. And, that, and the other thing is you're, you're really in the middle of the Boston Mountains down here. You've got Devil's Den Park, which is, I think, uh, 20 minutes from here. Lake Fort Smith, I can actually see off the back end here with uh, nature trails through both of them. They become huge draws. Uh, we get people here from all over the country. Your main uh, influx is coming from uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, well, Texas in general. 
Tulsa, Kansas City, St. Louis, and, and which goes back to just the location is fantastic. My other cabin, I used to rent quite often to people in the Fayetteville, Bentonville area, just wanted a quick getaway. But our plan here is probably to put, you know, three to four cabins, depending on how you can space them out. We have land on the other side of the road up there that's looking at Lake Fort Smith and then build our personal home up here and just keep it all uh, in one area. The key in my mind, it's just having privacy. And that's what we have to figure out is how to lay them out correctly. And that's kind of what we're in the pro uh, process of doing, but that's also what makes it so much fun is it's just, it's a, a learning experience. It's, it's a very creative experience. Uh, and again, I'm very lucky because I have great relationships with the land clearing crews, the uh, the construction uh, guys. A good friend of mine actually builds these cabins for me. And uh, it's just been a really, it's as they say, the uh, journey is more enjoyable than the end result. There's a lot of truth to that if you don't kill someone in the process, but it's- uh, Not that he has, not, <laughs> not that he has. As the fair skin boy jumps out in front of the camera. But uh, that's pretty much where we're at on this episode in a nutshell. Again, feel free to contact myself, Ken Larson. I am a realtor up here, so is Brent Farmer. And uh, we would love to uh, share any knowledge. Uh, we'd love to sell you some property or, uh, you know, if anything, guide you in the right direction or answer questions. All right, we're still on the same property that we're currently developing. Uh, just to touch on a few things. This is the road that obviously goes up to the top. This is an infrastructure thing that be aware and could save you money. This road was already there because the water tower is at the top. Uh, there's easements given to the, the Mountainburg Water Department and a couple other people. The nice thing about it is the maintenance of it, you split it with them, but you already have the road here. This type of road is very expensive to put in and you're going straight up. The problem is it should have done switch, they should have done switchbacks to get up this mountain. And I'm guessing the person that owned it didn't want to give up that much land when he gave the easement to the water tower originally, which I probably would have done the same thing. But this road was not put in correctly. It didn't have a crown, which you see most of your highways and uh, local paved roads. If you don't notice, there's a slight crown in it that allows everything to drain off of it. What I did when the bulldozer was up here, I had him crown this road. And we came back in and I put what's called a base gravel on there river creek rock whatever you want to call it that sets up after it rains almost like a concrete in and of itself you know you never know sometimes when you do these things but i think it will work it's already better but you know i've saved myself a tremendous amount of money by already having it here and being able to use it we also brent was giving me heck because i have another road next to it that the excavator put in but either way you look at it we've got one way in and one way out if we ever want to do that it's just uh a nice thing to fall into. This gate was on the land as well. That conveys when you buy a property uh, as part of the property. I moved these flower boxes up from another property. What you'll find is I like landscaping, flower boxes, you name it, because it just adds so much to it. And again, I kind of tend to play in the short-term rental business as well. But I also, if it's my own personal home, there's no easier way to add nice aesthetics to a place uh, than uh, landscaping flowers and all that good stuff so if you're looking to sell or buy land in northwest arkansas in the mountain area you need to get in hold of ken uh flower box ken and we can get you in touch with uh some the right answers he can help you strategize what to do with your land or to help you find the right land so reach out to us any day any time any any day or time let's see if i can talk all right